Hey everybody, so this is going to be the demo for the assignment 7 uh, context elevation assignment where we're going to use a photograph as a reference to make 2D elevations uh, of the neighboring buildings uh, for the uh, third project in studio. Uh, so what you'll want to do first is look at the uh, building assignment sheet which has on it um, images that are associated with each building. So for example, if you're working on number 14 here, you want to find these three images uh, and bring each one of them into Photoshop to straighten them out. For eight, you want to find these plus the other ones associated with eight, 12, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so this particular building is just outside of the scope of our site model. Uh, so it's not one that any of you will be drafting. So I'll use it as an example. Our goal is to take that and to convert it into a sort of straightened version like you see here. And I'll go through the process for that. So a couple things you need to keep in mind when you're doing this. Uh, first and foremost, um, we're going to be distorting this image. It doesn't really matter if we get a little bit stretched in one direction or the other. So it might end up looking like a sort of stretched version of the building or a sort of widened version of the building. Uh, really all that matters here is that we make a rectangular version of the elevation. So to do this, uh, I'm going to first make sure that my rulers are turned on, which is under view, and go to rulers and then drag off on the side to bring out some guides. I'm gonna drag uh, four different guides, so one for each side of the building, and I'm just kind of approximately aligning it to the center of each of the uh, lines I'm gonna use for a reference. So the verticals, I'm just gonna use the side of the building. For the top and bottom, I'm just gonna identify an element that appears to be horizontal, a horizontal element. And uh, it can be, in this case, I'm using sort of the base, um, sort of the water table down here, and maybe the cornice element up there. It doesn't really matter too much what we use, as long as we can identify elements that are perfectly horizontal and perfectly vertical as part of the elevation. Uh, once we've done that, uh, select the layer that you are working on. And with the Show Transform tools on in your upper left-hand corner, right here, um, click any of the edges of this to get the transform tools to activate, and you can right click and go to distort. Distort is gonna be our sort of tool of choice for this operation. And basically what we wanna do is drag the corner points until we can get everything to perfectly align. Um, again, stretching this thing weirdly, like if it starts to look really vertically stretched or horizontally stretched, isn't really a problem. We're not really concerned about that. We're just trying to get this thing to fit into that box as closely as we possibly can. Um, so this is a sort of process where you have to go back and forth. Adjusting one side will inherently sort of pull the other side out of whack. So you just have to go back and forth repeatedly until you get it exactly uh, or as close as you can to a rectangle. Again, using the reference points that you started with. So I think I actually might have shifted and used a different horizontal below, but it doesn't really matter too much. Just get this thing as rectangular as possible. Shouldn't take too long, but it does take a little bit of going back and forth. So then once you're getting close, you want to start zooming in a bit and taking a little bit more minute control. Again, just going back and forth until you are pretty confident with your facade being as straight and vertical as possible. Okay, so I'm just gonna call that. I think that's pretty close. I could maybe adjust this upper right hand corner some more. Um, I already have a version that I've sort of spent a little bit more time on, but for the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna call this good enough. Um, and once you get to this point, Essentially, all you have to do now is use the rectangular selection tool and select the general area of your building. And then we're just going to crop this. Uh, the reason being, we don't need any of that extra information. All we're really focused on is the building itself. Uh, now, this building is a little trickier because it has a tree in front of it. Some of yours do, and you'll just have to sort of deal with them as uh, they appear. Um, this one happens to be not too difficult because we can see a good portion of one side of the building and it is a symmetrical composition so what we see on the left side we can kind of assume is going to be uh, pretty close to what we see on the left side or the right side 
Um, so I've already brought that photo in here. We can see this guy. And that's really just the process of just dragging it in and placing it. Now it doesn't really matter the scale. Right now we'll scale it later. So I have a version that I've already drafted up, but I'll show you the sort of basic steps. Um, so we're generally going to approach this as if we were trying to make a laser cut file as it's good practice. Um, there's a few things you want to keep in mind, which is one, we want to be working with layers. So I have some basic layers here. I have the, uh, my heaviest of my building layers, which is just going to be my elevation or outline layer, a detail specific layer, and then a sort of mid-level layer, which might be an interior cutout if I were laser cutting or a heavier hatch or I'm sorry, a heavier line weight. And then we have a ground line, which is going to be your heaviest. And very importantly, we actually have a separate layer that is just for photographs. Um, and I want to take the um, photo that I've uh, imported and put it on that layer. So I've already done that in this case, and I've actually already locked it too. Because when you're drafting and you want to select a line and you actually select the photo, it can be very annoying. So if all your photographs are on a single layer in Rhino and you can lock it, uh, you'll never have that issue. No matter what you do, you're not going to be accidentally dragging the thing around. Um, but those, the rest of those layers are going to be really useful to have. So I'm going to mostly be using the rectangle tool and some of the basic drafting 2D tools. So I'm going to start with sort of my building outline, finding a sort of the bottom corner of this thing. And I'm actually not going to go all the way up to the cornice um, because if we look here, this cornice actually has some perspective on it. A elevation should never have any perspective. It's really a flat on view. Um, so because we're seeing the underside of this cornice, we know that that's not going to be super accurate. So we're going to have to make some special adjustments for that. But we'll come back to that. Uh, what I'm going to focus on is creating one of the bays. So we see there's three bays at this project. I'm going to create the one on the far left because I can see it the easiest. It's not being obscured by this tree here. Um, so I'm now going to go to my elevation detail uh, level and just create a rectangle that is that general shape. And then I'm going to create a rectangle for my general window. Um, and actually, I'm going to create a line straight up and down my overall bay. And that's just going to be as a reference, so I know that it's the center of my bay. So as I'm drafting these things, I know realistically, although the photograph may kind of look uh, um, somewhat asymmetrical, um, if we look how we drafted this uh, window here, which is fairly accurate to the photograph, if we turn the photo off, well, it's hard to see because of the colors, but it's not exactly symmetrical. Um, we can kind of assume this building is really symmetrical and what we're seeing is kind of just an illusion of the perspective. Um, so each of these windows has a lintel and a sill, the lintel being above, the sill being below. Um, these are typically, again, symmetrical objects. So I drew the left side here and just the left side, and I'm going to mirror it across the window because then I will get a perfectly symmetrical sill. Ooh, but that was not across the window. Um, I have that center line, but I haven't quite uh, made my window centered yet. So I want to use the window. And then just going to connect these so I can make them into one uh, curve. So I just uh, did the join command in that case. I'll do the same sort of operation on the sill down here. Just draft out just one side and mirror it across the window itself and connect the points. So I'm going a little quick right now, but that should be okay. A lot of this is sort of basic review of um, drafting, uh, lots of uh, basic rectangles and polylines and that sort of thing. Gonna do an offset to create this sort of inner window, which looks like it might be a little lower on the top. Uh, the bottom seems about right. And then I have some inner windows inside of that window. Um, which I'm just actually going to do another offset. Um, this time do again, the measurements here really don't matter too much uh, because we will scale everything later. So they just need to be relatively accurate. And by relatively, I mean relative to the photograph itself. So I might decide that I'm going to make the uh, window cut out where the window actually is recessed back. Um, so this line here to be my slightly heavier line weight. So it's going to get the blue line right now. Uh, and then these will just be details. So once I've done that, I'm going to take this whole window 
and align it more accurately using midpoints uh, to that center line that I drew. So you can see it's no longer perfectly accurate to the photograph, but we know it's symmetrical, so it's probably more accurate to real life than the way it is uh, appearing in the photo. Um, but now I can kind of assume that these windows are pretty close to one another, so I'm just gonna pull this guy up and use it as a reference for my second window, which I can see looks to be maybe a little bit taller. And I'll just assume that that is correct. So I'm just gonna turn these points on and shift some things up. Gumball in this case is going to be your best friend at just getting these things pretty approximately accurate, as well as the smart track tool uh, to reference each other. So you can see here the lintel actually goes all the way across. Um, now it looks like this lintel jumps up, but again, I can tell that that is just a perspectival uh, sort of illusion that we see. Um, so we'll draft that in a second. We'll come back to that. Uh, these details here, I'm just gonna use the array command and just guess that there's about six of them. Seems to be about right. And then I need to do this rectangle here, which is just some brickwork. Again, I'm just kind of guessing at these offsets. It doesn't matter too terribly much, but I do want to make sure that I get everything aligned as nicely as possible. I'm actually gonna bring this out of alignment so it's a little easier to make sure I'm doing it right. Again, my snaps are set to media to midpoint and just bring that in. Okay, so that's actually a pretty good amount of detail for one bay, as we can see here. So I know this whole building is symmetrical, so I can actually, again, use the midpoint to mirror, in this case, right across the center line with copy turned on. So we can see now I have the right bay and the left bay. I also know I need the center one, which I'm just gonna use the midpoint and the uh, smart track to bring that into the center. Now we can see the mid one is actually uh, seemingly a bit larger. So I'm just gonna select the elements that need to grow a bit, which are gonna be these here and drag them out until they align. Now these did become detached as part of that process. So I might have to make some adjustments as I make these uh, sort of minor adjustments to the scale of that center bay. And I'm gonna turn things on and off to see I'm getting pretty close as far as detail goes. It hasn't taken too long just yet. Um, so I'm gonna get this uh, side element here. It seems to go all the way up. And of course I would be mirroring that over across as well. Um, there's some horizontal elements as we can see here. Now I'm not gonna do everything in my sort of drafting example right now, but I'm gonna try to cover the um, well, the unique bits as much as I can. So now we have uh, this more interesting brick coursework that we see here. Um, so I'm actually just gonna start by, um, well, I'm gonna draft this first piece, just kind of following it. So I could just go across the entire thing, but to save myself time, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually just going to draft a part of it. Now you can see here, this first bit is actually not quite the same proportions as the rest. So I'm just going to draft this piece separately and you'll see why in a second. So I just drafted this because that is going to be consistent across the entire uh, width of this project. And I'm going to do a ray tool and ray this across. Oops. Try that again, again, snapping the points this time. And you can see here, I got pretty close. Uh, I'm going to mirror the end condition, which is slightly different than the beginning and end. Try that again. And it looks like I need one more of these. Now to get the scaling right, you can see it's just a little bit off. I'm actually going to take all of the first or the middle set that are unique not these end conditions, do a scale 1D to get these to be perfectly aligned. And there we go. We can't see that detail, but just based on the fact that it is a symmetrical pattern, we can tell that it will repeat. And now that is uh, pretty perfect. So I we'll wanna do the same thing again for the windows. We can assume that they are, again, aligned on top of one another. So, if I just draw one side, I can use the middle alignment to mirror across and create the other and then join those together. 
do another offset. And again, just copy this across. And now we're getting pretty detailed. So the last thing I want to do is uh, the corners and these dentals that we see here, which are these um, uh, little individual elements. Um, so the cornice, as I mentioned, is in perspective. So it's actually, we're seeing the underside of it. Um, so it's really not as high as it appears. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is assume that the face that we see here is accurate and that the connecting bit that is in perspective is not accurate. So I'm just going to draft the edge profile of this. I'm going to use my original um, edge down here as a reference and just draft approximation of this profile, just kind of stepping it back. And assuming that it is aligned to that uh, brick below. So that's my new uh, edge of the building. Um, I can take this profile and draft it across. Now what you want to avoid doing is having these sort of weird angles like this as the building really isn't projecting out like that. That's just a consequence of perspective. So if you copy these cornice elements straight across, you'll get a pretty accurate cornice, which is actually really going to become my building outline. So I'm actually going to use that to trim my building outline as is and join them together and make sure that's on my building outline layer. And now I can add in the detail to that cornice. like so, which are really just primarily lines that are running across. And the similar process to making these sort of uh, brick corners down here, we want to do the same thing for the dentals, um, which it looks like I'm going to make an approximation. So it looks like they are, look something like Again, I'm not being super accurate here. Um, it's going to be a really small detail on the overall project, so don't have to be too particular. But I would like to get something in here. And the same array linear command. I'm going to use another reference point here. And again, I made a few too many, but that's okay. I can come back. I'll select all of these and do the scale 1D command in order to scale them to get the proper count. So I'll pull them back so they align a little bit better than the photograph. and copy this guy over. And I'm pretty close to done at this point, at least with that sort of dental detail. Just making some minor adjustments and gonna do the scale 1D command again so that I can make them align perfectly to these edges. And there we go. Close enough approximation to that dental detail. Now this line here is probably gonna get cut by these, so I'm just gonna do a trim command. And you can now see that this line ends there. Of course, I could have just done that simpler just by pulling the control point of that line down. OK. So I didn't do the bottom of this, but uh, you'd follow a similar process. Um, but I'm just going to end here on the sort of drafting portion and go into uh, the scaling portion of the assignment. So we drafted based on a photograph that we just placed uh, with zero regard for actual dimension or scale. And now we need to make sure that this thing is actually dimensioned and scaled appropriately. Uh, the way we're going to do that is looking at the provided site, uh, which is this guy here. So I know my building that I was looking at, I believe to be, I'm going to turn buildings on for a second, uh, this guy here. Now, 
I could measure the building footprint as seen. However, it's going to be tremendously inaccurate. And the reason being, these building footprints are simply someone who traced uh, a Google uh, satellite image from above and probably had to trace all of these buildings in a single day. So they did kind of an okay approximation, but not terribly accurate and not uh, much better than an approximation. A good example is down here. Uh, these buildings here, if you were to actually walk down the street, you can see that they all align to one another and they probably all align to the property lines that they're actually built on as opposed to projecting out into the sidewalk. Um, so that's a good indication that those may be not the most accurate things in the world. There's some other things here. This is actually not buildings. These are properties that seemingly are projecting into the street. So there's always going to be some weirdness that happens with GIS data. Um, it's never perfect. I mean, the data set that this came from has every line in the entire city, uh, which of course is a huge amount of data. So there are going to be mistakes. Um, however, you know, we can't assume that these buildings are accurate. In fact, they are, we can assume very inaccurate. Um, they give you a general sense of what the building outline might be, but beyond that, very inaccurate. However, the parcels, uh, which are the layer that's labeled parcels, which are these here, these are actually based on real data. So this parcel or property, the city actually knows to be a particular distance and value. So it will be much closer, not perfect, but much closer to what it really should be in real life. So if I measure this, I can see that it is 24.76 feet wide by 111.38 feet deep. That's gonna be your most accurate data you can really get out of this. Uh, the elevation, I'm sorry, the topography lines are again based on satellite data and a approximation of what's actually there and not necessarily perfect. The same thing you'll find for uh, streets and sidewalks, which look pretty close, but if you really actually were there, you can see, again, they were just hand drawn by someone looking at a Google Earth image. So really what we want to focus on are the, uh, the parcels themselves, because those are going to be the most accurate thing. So what we're able to determine is uh, most of the buildings in this neighborhood uh, go from property edge to property edge. You know, if we look at uh, the photograph, we can see here the building adjacent to it on either side is built right up next to it. So that building is built to property line on both sides. So we can assume whatever the property width is, which in this case it's 24.76, 24 is really going to be the width of our building. Now, it doesn't give us the height, but at least gives us the width. So I'm going to go into Rhino, use the specifically scale 1D. Do not use scale 2D or just normal scale. It has to be scale 1D right now. And I'm going to type in that width that we just found, 24.76 feet. Now, that's going to make the building look terrible because we only scaled the width and we didn't scale the height. So we need to find out what the actual accurate height is right now. So to do this, the easiest way is actually going to be uh, going and downloading Google Earth Pro. Now, specifically, you want to get Google Earth Pro and not just use Google Earth on a browser or use Google Maps because Google Earth Pro has a bit more uh, sophisticated measuring tools and a bit more, uh, well, detailed than the other applications do. So if you do the, just Google the term Google Earth Pro, you'll be, you'll come to this uh, website where you can uh, download the Google Earth Pro on your desktop. So just get this here and install it. It works for both Mac and PC. Um, it's fairly simple to use. So with that open, which will look something like this, you want to type in the general address. Uh, maybe even just typing in Cincinnati will get you to the area, and you can kind of navigate around until you can find the building. Um, for reference, this is uh, Central Parkway, and that is Liberty. Um, the Area code of this area, I believe, is 45202 um, or something very similar to that. So if you type that in, you should be able to get to pretty close to where we are here. Um, we could also look for Finley Market, that building right there, Finley Market in Cincinnati, Ohio, will get you, again, very close to our actual site, um, which is right here. So I know the building I'm looking at is actually not one of our buildings, but is this guy right there. So what I want to do is actually measure the front facade of it um, using the measuring tools in Google Earth Pro. So these buildings are, again, based on satellite data, but instead of um, someone hand estimating things, they are based on actual measurements 
uh, based on the photography that these satellites take. So the heights that they have tend to be a sort of more accurate bet as to what they are in real life. So this is a tricky pra, uh, particular building because there are trees in front of it and there's also this van truck thing. So I'm gonna have to get as best of view as I can by sort of orbiting around until I can see a straight line where I can go from the sidewalk all the way up to the, the corners of the building. Now, if I click on this tool here, the ruler tool, it'll bring up um, a ruler and I wanna navigate to the 3D path. Uh, the others will not work. You just want to use the 3D path. Click a base point and the top. Sometimes it will take you clicking a couple times, and it should give you a length. Sometimes you'll want to repeat this process, so 36.35. Let's try it again. Let's see if I get the same number, 37. And the other thing you want to do is orbit around once you've done it. You can see here that this time I wasn't super straight up and down, so maybe that 36.35 was more accurate. Um, it's pretty easy to accidentally think you're measuring the right thing. Say if I was measuring, or if you add more points, it'll continue with that uh, calculation. So we'll just use that 36.35. So again, scale 1D, and I'll just take the center point, and 36.35, and now at a scale. So again, this isn't a fully drafted version of this, but it does have the correct width and the correct height. Um, once you are complete and you are happy with your drafted elevation, uh, what you will do is place the photograph, I'm just going to eliminate my extra one, place the photograph directly next to it. Um, you'd want to ideally scale it to be the same. Um, and then print this to PDF for each of the facades that you've been assigned. Um, and that will be it. Uh, it would be good to add in a ground line, which I have a uh, layer for that, um, which was assigned a sort of thicker line weight, and that's just going to be at the base here, like so. Um, so if I turn on print display now, you can see I have a sort of thicker outline around the outside of the building and an even thicker line at the base of the building. And then I can see the two right next to each other, so this will be all you need. Um, to make your life easy so the scale, thing scales, when you do the scale 1D operations, you might as well have the photograph selected at the same time, which would mean that photo layer is not locked so that you can scale it based on the drawing so you don't have to. I mean, again, if you make approximations afterwards, that's fine. Um, as long as we can see the stuff drawing that you base it on and the output that you have here, and you want to save that. So to show you an idea of where we're heading with this. So this is uh, an example I used last year, and it's actually from a real project um, that I've done in my firm. Um, you can see here that overlaid there, and it's the cover of the assignment sheet. Uh, ultimately, next week, we're gonna be taking these elevations and making them into a 3D version of each of these buildings that you can see here. So this is that building. Um, this was a digital site model done for a real project um, that is uh, probably starting construction in the next month or so. Um, this project was in a historic neighborhood, so it was very important to be able to reference the neighboring buildings. However, I think it's important to reference the neighboring buildings in any context, whether it's historic or not, or required by code or not, um, because it's good to understand the, the general area in which you're building. So you can see here, uh, each one of these facades was drafted up in the exact same method I just showed, taking uh, photographs straight on as much as possible, tilting them and straightening them in Photoshop, and then uh, bringing them into Rhino to digitally draft them as 2D um, facades, and then uh, essentially using a combination of the GIS data and the Google Earth data to make approximations of the building volumes themselves. Now, this was... Uh, built with the intent of eventually laser cutting out, which is why we see this large hole here. So in this case, that's referred to as a site hole, um, which is, this is the whole site for the project that we were working on uh, with a giant hole built because at the time when this model was designed, we weren't sure how much of a basement we needed. So we just wanted to give ourselves as much flexibility in design as possible and not limit how deep we'd want to go with the basement, knowing that we could always fill it in later um, in the modeling process.
So we also, this site, uh, unlike the one we're using in studio, has quite a steep uh, drop off. So I believe it's 32 feet from the highest point of the site to the lowest. Uh, not something we have to deal with in studio, but it is something we have a little bit of uh, topography to manage with. Um, so this was also built with the intention of laser cutting. So that same sort of layer organization I mentioned before allowed each one of these things to be cut out and made into a uh, surface. So if we look at each one of these models, and I will just isolate this for a second and go to another view. We'll go to ghosted. Uh, we can see they're grouped right now uh, to keep them organized, but I will ungroup them. Um, each of the sides was built separately so that each one of these could then be uh, unfolded downwards and made into a surface that could be uh, laser cut itself. Um, and all these sides were uh, considered with laser cut dimensions. So ultimately the laser model was one eighth. So I was going to cut out of uh, one eighth inch equals a foot. So I was going to cut out of one eighth inch materials. So all these were a foot equal or one inch equals a, or, I'm sorry. They were all a foot thick walls, whether they were in real life or not, um, so that they could be perfectly cut out. Um, another thing I wanted to make sure I did ahead of time was consider the joints, uh, the joints of these things. So the most important side of this building which I'm just gonna quickly turn off these ISO curves, uh, was the facade that had all the detail on it. So I wanted that facade to not have any exposed edges on it. Uh, the facade on the uh, east and west were the second most important. So you can see we get one exposed edge here of the front facade. And the rear, which is least important, um, you get three different exposed edges. And why that matters is when you're laser cutting, you get burnt edges, which are dark, so you don't necessarily want to have big dark outlines on the front of your building unless you really intend to do so. So that's why you get a full clean facade here without any sort of edges as part of this assembled model. Now again, this isn't something we really need to consider, but I'm just bringing it up because it was part of the building process for this project. And ultimately, you know, this was made into a uh, physical model, uh, which looks something like this. Um, again, this is eighth scale, so I believe that's about 30 inches by 24 inches or something pretty close to that. Um, the buildings themselves were cut out of eighth inch chipboard uh, with laser cut detail for all the elevation information. And the site itself in this case was CNC modeled um, using the Como router uh, out of Baltic birch plywood, which is a particular type of very fancy plywood that has very consistent and dense plies of all of the same material. So when you cut it, you get this really nice, uh, consistent striations that you see here that kind of look like topography lines, but are pretty similar to that. And these are just some shots of that model. And this is also when we were doing a study model. So that's the study model that fit into the site hole. So you can see how it starts to relate to the site. Um, and again, this was a fairly early on model in the process. These are just some detail shots, some assembly shots of how you're building those boxes. And you can see the importance of considering where your set of burnt edges were going to be as part of building the model in the first place so that these facades remain as clear as possible or as clean as possible. It's what it, uh, when you're cutting out materials, what they tend to look like. And this was the assembly process for the uh, CNC model base. Um, these things don't always come as one giant piece, but they have to be milled in separate pieces. So it actually came uh, with pieces like this that then had to be glued together. And of course, a lot of sanding. So this is the CNC itself, cutting these things out. Uh, sort of dry fit assembled. And then all the clamps I could possibly find at the time, uh, gluing the thing together. Um, this is a gallon of expensive wood glue. Um, at least half of which is in the model. So that also tells you how heavy this thing got uh, in glue alone. But Baltic birch plywood is also a very heavy plywood. Uh, so ultimately, that's what this thing looks like. Um, so although we may not be doing this in this particular semester, um, it is something you will likely be doing in future semesters. So that's why I bring it up. Okay. Uh, with that, again, so the, the big takeaways here are, you know, bring your photo into Photoshop. Uh, straighten it out, bring that into Rhino, uh, draft that out in as much detail as possible. So you want to include things like street trees and things like that as part of the elevation. Um, keep them on a separate layer um, just because it adds a little bit more detail when you're uh, printing off these elevations. So your final product will be a printed page that looks like this for each of the assigned elevations. And again, look to that document um, that will be provided uh, that has all the assignments um, posted with it.
Okay. And that's it for this one. Thanks.